Symptoms and progression. Um, as a child, I had some some things that I didn't even know were were migraine triggers and were were part of FHM. I had no idea. Um, so I, as a kid, I was um, horribly. Uh, lacked coordination, I wasn't good at sports, um, I had no stamina, um, and I, I had some muscle weakness that I didn't realize I had compared to other people. I, I realized that as I got older that I was different. Um, so I was the proverbial, you know, nerd because I, I had no, no, no athletic ability at all. Um, I also had some weird visual disturbances um, and they, uh, and going to get my daughter diagnosed, I found out that these are actually symptoms of FHM. I would have uh, moments when I would wake up at night and I would be scared and I would say that everything was really close or really far away. Um, I would see things very close up, very magnified or very far away. And that is a visual disturbance that's caused by migraines. And there's all kinds of visual disturbances that can happen, um, but that is kind of one that's very characteristic of having familial hemiplegic migraine as a child. Um, I did have mild headaches. Uh, that's also a, a concern. So if your child does have headaches under the age of 10, you should probably go get them checked out um, just to make sure that everything's okay. But that's another sign that something's, something's wrong. Um, and I also had what's called uh, nystigmus, which is if, you, if I focus um, and a doctor looks at my eyes, there'll be a little bit of movement in my eye. It'll, it'll track, it'll back and forth. Um, so I can't actually focus on something and focus directly on something. So that's another uh, symptom. So um, there are kids who have familial hemiplegic migraine and go through paralysis and go through all kinds of things. I didn't as a child. Um, it just seemed to be um, I kind of actually didn't even know that I had it, didn't even notice it. I didn't realize that I was different until later on. So um, the disease progressed as an adult. Um, so what st first started happening was I, I did have a lot of head trauma throughout my life and, and um, had a severe concussion in my late 20s that kind of seemed to ramp up my migraines to an, a, new, a whole new level of fun and excitement. Um, so um, it, um, it began with just severe headaches and those headaches got worse and worse and worse and they, they became longer and longer and longer to the point where I didn't, there wasn't a day when I didn't have a headache. I had a headache constantly. Um, I also had some symptoms of um, numbness and tingling. So I had like these pins and needle feelings oh, and I hate touching my arms because that just triggers it, but um, up and down the sides of my arms here. Um, and then I started having muscle weakness where I, uh, I, I work in IT and I dropped, a, uh, I dropped a monitor one time down a flight of stairs. So yeah, that wasn't good. Um, <laughs> No, the monitor didn't make it. <laughs> um, so, uh, but, so that kind of started, and then I began to have a tremor. Um, so kind of like a constant, uh, constant movement in my legs. Um, I couldn't stop it. Um, sometimes it was in my arms, and my hands would move and things like that. And then um, from there, it progressed into the classic symptoms of FHM, which are slurred speech uh, with a headache. Um, f slumping of the face, so my right side will slump down, um, and then uh, numbness, um, paralysis on the right side. Um, my, my FHM attacks are unusual in that they do have, so I do get blurred vision. I get what's, um, sometimes I get like blind spots in my vision, um, so like little black spots. Um, and then sometimes I, I'll get like a blurred vision, which will be like, um, like Vaseline is on a spot in my eye, you know, it's kind of blurry like that. Um, uh, I do get the slumped face, I get slurred speech, I do get paralysis on the right side, I have an inability to stand, I'll fall over on you. Um, people have caught me before. Um, some people have not caught me. <laughs> um, I do have ataxia, so I will walk, I'll start staggering, uh, which is just kind of like a wide gait that's where you're trying to gain your balance as you're, as you're losing your ability to stand. Um, uh, incontinence, you'll lose bladder control, um, sometimes bowel control. Um, seizures, I do have seizures um, during it. So my, 
particular brand of FHM attack looks like I'm having a stroke and a seizure at the same time. It's kind of like, it's a weird little thing to watch. Um, and then also I have lost consciousness before. One time I did lose consciousness. And then some of the after effects of after you've had an attack, um, I, do, I have had memory loss um, and, and confusion that lasted for a long time. Um, the memory loss over time, it has kind of eroded at my, abil my memory ability and I have had to change jobs because of it. So people are gonna tell you that the, you know, you're gonna have stroke-like symptoms, but they're, you know, completely reversible. Um, I've found that they're not completely reversible. You, you can have some permanent damage to it. And um, I'll talk to you later about a support group you can get with and, and, and talk to other people who have FHM and uh, kind of compare symptoms and find out where you are. So um, as uh, that, that was prior to meds, those are all the symptoms I had prior to meds. I still have a lot of those symptoms when I have an FHM attack. Um, however, the frequency of attack has gone down and I no longer have a headache every day. I in fact am quite headache free. Uh, I rarely have a, a migraine now. So mostly it, my attacks consist of a slumping of the face, slurred speech, and then a, a real big attack will actually end up in a seizure um, with some paralysis. So um, definitely FHM sufferers can have uh, non-headache symptoms and, and headache symptoms as well. So that's completely normal. Um, and you can go back and forth as well. You can have them one time and not the next. Um, and the same goes for a lot of the symptoms. You can, it, you, your attacks can vary widely depending upon the severity. So if you think about that, it's just about, you know, how, how much lack of oxygen do you have to your brain going on? And so that can vary the symptoms. Um, sometimes during a seizure symptom, I will cry. Sometimes I can't speak um, at all. And then sometimes I will seem to just constantly like, like shout like I have Tourette's or something going on. So, um, and it just, it just seems to be whatever part of the brain is affected at the moment, it kind of triggers whatever is going on.